Hey tribe, welcome back to another episode of Exhale. This is episode three and I'm so happy to have you here with me. If you're new to the channel, you know the drill, hit subscribe and show some love. Before we start today's episode, I just wanna say thank you to our host for the day, the ABBA. Also special thanks to my extensions KE on Instagram for providing the hair on my head. Today we have a lovely lady here with us. Her name is Grace. She has her son here, Riley, and she's gonna talk to us about her experience raising Riley. You can introduce yourself to my tribe tell us about yourself your age how old your baby is and you can tell us now your experience okay mm -hmm. so hi guys i'm grace else i'm G from the dingy family you can check out our channel i'm 25 years old i just turned 25 and riley is one year old and three months i when i found out i was pregnant mm -hmm. i I just okay when I was about uh, around eight weeks that's when I went to the hospital because mm. I never wanted to delay like going to the clinics because mm. I had a first pregnancy then I had a miscarriage mm. so when I found out I was pregnant for the second time mm. sequent I could delay mm. so I went straight to the hospital mm. and I just started my clinics mm. um, my pregnancy was super easy sequa mm -hmm. team even my baby would turn out to have any complications sequa mm. hydra and um, so I went for several scans mm. I went for several scans and mm. none of the scans ever told me that my baby had any complications mm. scans out I went for like five scans mm. and they all said that my baby was fine mm. so to me I knew I'll give birth to a very healthy baby mm. Mm. so when the time came for me to give birth it was on April 5th that's when my liver pain started mm. So the lens the morning, mm. I went to the hospital because mm. you know on your first time mom usually don't know what you're in labor. Yeah. So my mom told me if you're feeling like a bit so cramps. Yeah, cramps, just yeah. go to the hospital. Mm. So many kinda hosi. Mm. And they told me that I had dilated like four centimeter. Mm. But they told me to go back home and do it for other signs. Mm. And they just went back home because they never knew. Mm. So by around nine 9 p.m. Mm. I the pain was just severe, like zillions. I took a call, they came, mm. too. So mm. we went back to the hospital, mm. and then they told me I had dilated like eight eight centimeter. And okay, uh, I just have to wait, you know, to go there until I'm like 10, 10, 10, yeah. 10, 10 centimeter. Yeah. So it was around 9 mm. 9 p.m. Mm. So to Kakaho see so Dan was told to leave mm. and I was left alone in the hospital. Mm. I stayed up to around two PM, mm. two AM, two AM mm. actually. No, it's April six now. Yeah. Mm. It's April six two AM. Two AM. Mm. And uh Barosi Jashuguli Kiunona. Mm. They are just telling me that I'm still eight centimeters. So I just mm. wondered how can I be from nine PM to two AM? Mm. I'm still eight centimeter. Mm. So I went to the doctor and I told him to break my water because mm. why would we just sit there and wait for the water and mm. it's not because Nil Kanakumbuka I used to hear like some stories mm. people usually stay in labor three days or even. yeah yeah <laughs> so like me I don't stay three days yeah ni kambia doki just break my water mm. and he said okay mm. so he went and he broke my water and uh, and it was green. So um, he told me that my baby had pooped mm. in the stomach, inside my tummy, so mm. he had like pooped. Mm. And he said it was an emergency, so it said I got to the theater mm. or he induces me. Yeah. So he induced me mm. to speed up, I guess, my dilation. Mm. So um, around after 15 minutes, I went to give, to give birth mm. to Riley. Mm. So after I gave birth to Riley, mm. He took Riley and showed me and told me. And when I'm to talk, I was like, yeah, I'm going to. But 
nikas kwa mwana vizuri but I was okay ni mwana he's a child mm. and also happy actually so mm. they just took him and they placed him on a on a bed that was there and wakaanza kumwipe and all that mm. and they told me you have to call your husband because mm. this is an emergency and uh, we have to take your baby to Kenyatta so by that time I was calling Dan several doctors all come me kujza kwa na mtoi because they had never seen anything like that mm. my baby was born with all of his intestines outside small large mm. everything was outside mm. so everyone was shocked but i was not shocked mm. i don't know why but i just i wasn't shocked mm. but everyone else was shocked mm. even when dan came alingia inside the room and he cried and mm. was like why are you crying mm. i don't <laughs> see anything wrong with the baby yeah. i was not shocked yeah so after that they took us to kenyatta mm. Uh, they made sure we were admitted and everything mm-hmm. so Riley was taken in the as in alikatu apo kwa admission mm-hmm. akuingishwa kwa nasari so mm-hmm. alikatu apo kwa admission and I was taken to the maternity ward mm-hmm. and then Dan left this is the same day yeah it's the same day oh, okay. the same day that I've just given birth so the ward that I was taken to mm-hmm. it's where uh, women who have their babies in nasari mm-hmm. they usually stay there yeah and if you have your baby in a sari you don't have a bed there mm. the beds belong to the women with kids mm. when mom put our toy so us we used to sleep mm. on the floor mm. because us, our kids are not there mm. and every after every three hours we go to see your child mm. and by that time il pelete menye kulpana the story is about that hospital yeah oh, the one for women uh, women being raped yeah at ah, okay. that time mm. and i had my stitches mm. and the women that we were going with to see our babies mm. it's like walikuwa mm. poor so they would work so fast mm. and you're and, there with your stitches uh, i'm there i'm like yeah. how these people working so fast yeah i was not pumping milk cuz really was not eating mm. in that condition that he was in you cannot eat because food cannot be absorb when, oh, okay. when you are in it, your mm. belly is outside mm. so sorry um before i cut, um just to tell the viewers of the name of, of the, the condition yeah. so really had gastroschisis it's a condition where parts of your body are outside maybe in some kids the mm. lungs are outside mm. kidney heart it's also called gastroschisis the intestines small intestines so for Riley it was the small and large intestines all of them they were mm. outside every time I used to go there mm. and I'll just look at him he was mm. very cute mm. just look at him or just and then he was very hungry mm. he could not eat mm. they just gave him water mm. and it was drop by drop like after Three minutes a drop mm. three minutes a drop so my baby was eating his injections here he had been injected there the drip and mm. so i'll kind of let you shindano i'll carry cooler the like the leaves they were green and black mm. oh my god we'll cut on on your room mm. and then i just stand there and look at him so because kenyatta they don't have th- there's a sack that when you have that condition mm. they the part that is outside it's supposed to be placed in that sack mm. so that every time you breathe in mm. get inside or oh, so when you breathe the the part that's outside goes back in yeah oh, okay. when you breathe in it gets inside okay but in kenyatta mm. they don't have that mm. i don't know if it's at that time they didn't have or they mm. don't have i don't mm. know mm. so the waka mweka ilo bag yani the bag that they usually put you in Ka- the kakata bag Yeah. Ah, okay. Mm. Mm. So you know the intestines mm. waka okazia kato hiwa. Every nurse that was there they just had negative vibes. No one was positive. <laughs> no one was positive there. Yeah. So they would just look at me and tell me well, why are you wasting your time and you're still very young. Mm. Why are you wasting your time? You can give birth to another, to another child. So I I chose to believe them the very first time. Mm. And I went back to bed, I mm. cried. Mm. 
and I chose not to go and see my child again. Mm. I was scared. Yeah, I was scared. Mm. So when I was there in bed, the other women came. So mm. it was the first time in Yenilienda. Jupo na mtoi. So the women just came. When we met up with Kwanasari. And they were talking. And they were like, have you seen the child in the admission? Mm. And something just inside came to me and told me, you have to stand up for your child. Mm. You have to be strong. Mm. So I just woke up and I told them, that is my child. So I stayed in Kenyatta for five days. Mm-hmm. In those five days, they were always telling me that my child is going to die. Mm. In the five days. Mm. So after the fifth day, my neighbor worked in Kijabe. Mm. And she told, she told my mom that actually they treat those conditions and kids to survive uh, oh, okay. at Kijabe okay. kids to survive mm. I, if I could find a way mm. she, can ta- she can take me to Kijabe mm. and I said okay mm. but I'm in Kenyatta and it's the biggest referral hospital mm. and they cannot refer you to another hospital mm. so we oh, just really? learned I yeah, they, can't, they can't oh. refer you to any other hospital unless you like write a letter and say you'll never go to that hospital again like me i can never go back to kenyatta because they already wrote that letter mm. I can never go back to kenyatta they cannot take me again oh so if kenyatta refers you elsewhere or rather if you say you want to go elsewhere you can't go back yeah you can't wow you can't wow so i wrote a letter my mom never wanted me to write that letter because she was like you know you're never going back to that hospital and mm-hmm. it's the biggest hospital mm. Let me just go because these people, they're not treating a child. Yeah. They're just telling me that the doctor is coming. There are no doctors actually. Oh. From day one, from the first day I stepped into that hospital up mm. to day five, no they really had never been seen by a doctor. Mm. And so on day five, I was fed up. Actually, in the morning, I was fed up. And there were these nurses from Mbisha. Mm. They were the ones who were coming like when Angeli or Toy. So I came to Kuda and they asked. I had some. I had one of them. I had one nurse ask. Kwani mm. incubator I find in Kazi. So he was in an incubator that's not working. Yeah, it's not working and it doesn't have clothes. It's not working. So I was fed up. I was like, my baby has been in that incubator from day one. It's, it's not, not day working. five. Mm. Hananga ngua. It's mm. not working. Like on a Tushima Shimo. Mm. So imagine the way my child was feeling. Mm. And every child, because Nyapa for admission, every child I'll call a pity up. Mm. So Angakwa passed to anything. Mm. So I was fed up, Mini Kasema, Miss Vizika Hoku. I'd rather write that letter. What I need and decay, stucky, stucky. So I wrote the letter. Mm. And then they started the process of me getting out of there. Mm. So Kijabe took us. Mm. They took Riley mm-hmm. and they sat up for admission. Mm. They were cleaning him. Mm. And then there was this doctor and he called me and Dan and he just told us like he told us. He called us and he told us just know that your baby has two percent. <laughs> so before we we get admitted, we have to know that it's two percent. Yeah, it's two percent. It's yeah. very risky. It's two mm. percent. Mm. And I was like, okay. They cleaned him, mm. and then they took that bag. They asked us if to not kakuana. We said, okay. We catch your bag. We keka the intestines. They told us that they were infected, so mm. they were okay. Mm. They just we catch your bag and. Uh, he was taken out to HDU, mm. HDU stroke ICU, it's mm. the same. Mm. So he was taken there, mm. I kept up an incubator, mm. and I was, I, wa, I was given a bed. So okay. after two days, Kwenda Kumwana, because I was going like every time to check on him, Kwenda Kumwana, Napata, like everything is inside. And he looked like, this is a miracle. Mm. I never thought that Zita Kwa inside. Yeah. Everything was inside. and. In Kenyatta, they told me it cannot work. Mm. After that, I can play like theater. Mm-hmm. Just get to theater. Mm-hmm. Akashonwa, akashonwa like kapaju. But because the tummy was small, mm. zikafinya the lungs, mm. so he developed problems in breathing. Mm. So after after theater, 
they called me. Actually, they called me separate. The doctor called me and told me um, some kids, some small babies, when they come out of theatre, they have problems in breathing. So he she just alerted me. Ndio akitoka theatre, ni kwa alert, of which I guess the walikuwa shajua, mm. I may develop problem. Mm. So I nikasema, okay. Me, I was okay with everything, so long as they are treating my child. Mm. I said, okay. So when Riley came, Riley was breathing very fast. Mm. He was breathing like... Mm. <laughs> I come to um, Anakimbia. Mm. So I can wake up with ventilation, because when you're breathing like that, I consume, consume a lot of oxygen. Mm. So I can wake up ventilator. He stayed for like two weeks in the ventilator. I can tell Okay, kwa kwa the normal oxygen. Mm. After I make kwa the normal oxygen, he started breathing fast again. Mm. So as in after the theater, that's when everything made us stay in the hospital for mm. three months just the breathing. Okay. So he developed aspiration pneumonia. Mm-hmm. That was like every time he ate, mm. food would go up. Oh, because the stomach is very small. Mm. So food would just go up to the lungs. Oh, yeah. Every wow. time he ate, food would go up to the lungs, mm. and he had problems in breathing. Mm. So I look well as a oxygen. Mm. So every time was on oxygen, from oxygen to ventilation, oxygen ventilation. Mm. I look at two in out oxygen, and then I can sip up. And the sip up like me looking in stock because it's like a wind. At the time, I was like. Do not go mm-hmm. <laughs> because of there he's breathing. Yeah, you know my baby had like I'll, I may reduce mm. the, the weight. Uh, the weight. Yeah, uh, I I gave birth to him at two point five mm. to Litoka ICU when he was at I don't know one point nine mm. and he was three months. So mm. imagine three months at one point mm. nine it was very small. Yeah, and when I was in the ICU, you know, a lot of things happened there. Yeah, a lot of things happened and. You may find there was a child here today and no, tomorrow no yeah. the child is not there. Yeah. One thing I told God when we were in the hospital with Riley, I used to pray and I would tell God, let everyone that is surrounding Riley just be filled with overwhelming love, mm. a love that they don't know where it comes from. So. I would also tell Riley every time I was there with him, mm. maybe he's not even hearing, he's mm. inside the corner of the ventilator, mm. he's in move, he's in his I mm. I'll just hold his hand and tell him, you know what, God loves you, Jesus loves you, Aww. mommy loves you, and everyone around you loves you. So how's life been after being discharged? So, wait, before being discharged, there mm-hmm. was this bill. Mm. Oh, bill. yeah. yeah. The bill amounted to 1.2, 1.2 million. Wow. So we had to make a baby. Mm. And you know, people just came out from mm. nowhere mm. and supported us. Mm. And we're very grateful for everyone who like supported us mm. for that coin. Mm. That coin. There were people who are like giving us even a 10, 10 bob and mm. it mm. really helped. So after that, we yeah. went home. Mm. I was very afraid of going home because yeah. I was like, how am I going to take care of Riley alone? Yeah. Oh, I had the, the same nurse. fear. You had the same fear. I I told my mom when I was discharged. There are no nurses at home. We can't go home. <laughs> <laughs> He's seen his mommy. Oh yeah. Really? Go to mommy. So this is done. Okay. Yeah. And Riley, who wants his mommy? Riley. Oh yeah. Hi Riley. Oh. <laughs> He he doesn't want anyone story. Yeah. yeah, he does. I can see. <laughs> Say hi to people and tell them thank you for saving your life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I just want to say thank you to Dan as well. Thank you for being there for for Grace and for Riley throughout. We can't hear anything. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you so much for being there. It takes a lot for a guy to stay. Yeah, it's not easy. Um, we will pause for mommy to feed her baby. Any encouragement? Words of advice? Uh, as a young couple, as a, as a young dad, I can say, uh, 
it's always good to take respons- the responsibility. Mm-hmm. So you guys uh, encourage young mothers, young moms, be there for her, show the love. Uh, it's always nice. I want to encourage all mothers out there. If you're going through the same thing that a lot of us here went through, yeah. and if you have a healthy baby, just say thank you. Always appreciate. Never forget to say thank you because some of us have gone through a lot and I would just tell you to always have faith, always believe in your prayers, have faith that can move mountains because God hears someone with faith. If your faith is very strong, he will hear you, he will answer your prayers and everything will be fine. Just trust in him and your baby is going to be fine. Do not cry a lot because God has you and God is watching over you. Encourage your baby, hold your baby, show them love, talk to them, and always give them positive image when you're with them, because they need that from you. They need your strength to be strong enough. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your story and exhaling. See you guys next time. If you want to find our lovely couple over here, I'll put their details in the description box. Once again, thank you so much to the ABBA for providing this space for this episode of Exhale and my extensions KE for providing the hair. I love you guys. Bye.